We are going to get started with just a brief introduction to the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Duane, if you're willing to pull us off the, um, the shared screen so that we can yes. see all of us gathering together. Yeah. Um, during the worship service, just for those of you who may be new to this or um, it's been a month <laughs> since you did Zoom, um, one of the things that you should know is that um, uh, we are all going to be, if you can all mute yourselves at this point, that will prevent you from becoming the person in the center of the screen. And um, because we're going to actually have a screen view for whoever is uh, presiding at the time. So if Gail is praying, she's going to be the face you see. If Madeline is reading the lesson, she'll be the face you see. Um, otherwise, um, there will be a couple of places in the course of the service where um, you will be unmuted completely and, um, and you, will, uh, you will have the opportunity to share the piece and also to speak the dismissal and then there will be time for chat uh, as we transition to our uh, Annual meeting. So I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing ambient noise, which means that there are probably some folks who are not muted. So um, I'm going to invite uh, all of you to just go ahead and mute yourselves as we um, get ready to hear the prelude. But I do want to tell you about the lesson that is going to be our focus for this morning. Um, Last week, we were with Jesus in the synagogue at Capernaum, his new home, uh, after he moved from Nazareth. And uh, he was teaching and suddenly found himself uh, being addressed by a man who had an unclean spirit. And he calls that unclean spirit out of the man. Now, uh, a week later for us, it is only hours later for Jesus and his uh, few disciples, and they are headed from the synagogue to, um, to Peter and Andrew's multi-generational house. Uh, it's still a Sabbath, so they're going to probably sit quietly and rest, um, but, they, but Jesus finds his um, powers called upon again. And so um, we have an encounter between him and Peter's mother-in-law, uh, who is in need of healing. Uh, we'll hear more about that later in the worship. First, the prelude, and then we'll begin with confession. Morning, uh, during the confession, um, you'll remain muted and Gail, as our assisting minister, will be the respondent to the confession speaking on behalf of all of you. But uh, behind your muted screen, you have voices to speak. So I encourage you to participate. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. 
Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken and interconnected webs of the life that binds us. We turn inward, falling, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider the generations to come. Forgive us, gracious Lord, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. As Christ's beloved community, we now trust the Spirit to empower us for lives of justice and reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Day 
and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still, you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you've told me who I am. I am. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and make the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or, or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is dis disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord is the broken hearted. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. The Lord heals the brokenhearted. Great is our Lord. In power, there is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make music on the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass 
used to grow up on the mountains. The Lord heals the broken hearted. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who wait God's steadfast love. Alleluia. The Lord is the broken hearted. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to each one of you from Jesus, who comes as our teacher and healer. Amen. In 1968, an American pop artist named Andy Warhol said, in the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes. In our era of reality TV, YouTube and social media, Andy's prediction has come true. We Americans wake up daily to people grabbing headlines and trying to harness our attention. Actors, politicians, business executives, influencers, and self-made YouTube celebrities buy for media coverage. While advertisers count every single consumer click we make, hoping to drive up their profits. Publicity pays in our culture, whether the attention is negative or positive. So our culture is riddled with conspiracy theorists promoting their misguided causes on YouTube or fashion gurus giving pointers on proper attire. What a weird world we live in. But fame is seductive. It has been since before history was ever recorded. And Jesus seems to know this because when we meet him today, he has just left the synagogue where he restored the man who had the unclean spirit. Notice where Jesus is now as the news of his fame spreads. He's not standing outside the synagogue shaking hands or offering to give autographs. As the crowd disperses, Jesus heads straight for a disciple's house. At this point, it is still the Sabbath, so Jesus does what every devout Jew would do. He makes no stops along the way, and he properly observes this holy day until sunset, with one exception. No sooner does Jesus cross the threshold of Peter and Andrew's multi-generational household 
then the disciples mention that Peter's mother-in-law is sick with a fever. My guess is that this isn't just some 24 hour bug. Any fever that can put an able-bodied woman to bed in those days had to have been serious. Serious not only because it would disable her, but also because in those times, such illness might have prompted people to ask really awful questions like, did she bring this illness upon herself? Not only could the mother-in-law not get up to fix meals or change grandchildren's diapers, she had to lay there with the knowledge that people might be speculating about whether she'd somehow brought this condition upon herself. Regardless of all of this, the Sabbath observance and the burden of criticism, Jesus still heads to the unnamed woman's sick room. He drops his newfound fame at the door, ignores Jewish decorum where men don't keep company with women they don't know, and he goes straight to her bedside. And no sooner has Jesus met this woman than he heals her. I wonder how many essential workers like her today can't afford to be sick. You know, the pregnant Panera cook who wears two masks and a face shield to prepare someone else's food. The kindergarten teacher who has a full Zoom lesson plan ready to go with silly wiggles dances set for intermissions and four video short links ready to keep her active little kids' brains and squirmy bodies engaged. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security, believe it or not, they're responsible for this information, tells us that essential workers are those people who conduct the range of services that keep critical infrastructure operating. In other words, those who work in restaurants, businesses, schools, and households, among many places where they are absolutely needed. These are people whose efforts regularly go unappreciated until they suddenly are not available. Like at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, I don't know if you remember this, but restaurants were just beginning to figure out how to do takeout services only. And the rest of us at home were learning how to cook every night again. Remember that? Remember when teachers were adjusting their curriculum to online learning? Maybe especially with essential workers, we, who fail to see them all too often, are susceptible to thinking that if we can't see them working, they aren't actually working. I read a headline the other day about parents growing impatient that schools are closed. I think a few teachers I know pretty closely would beg to differ about school being closed. And if we are inclined to take restaurant workers and educators for granted, just imagine what we are capable of assuming about grandmothers in multi-generational households. While they are busy taking kids out for walks or making dinner for three generations of family and doing this so that mom or dad can fill out more job applications, do we imagine that they are sitting around watching the prices right? I remember doing a women's retreat about spiritual gifts at Calvary many years ago where the majority of women present, after they evaluated, took the inventory of spiritual gifts, sheepishly identified their dominant spiritual gift as hospitality. Cooking meals or hosting a small group wasn't hard, they said. Do it all the time. And they almost suggested that they were embarrassed to call hospitality a gift. But imagine what your loved one's funeral reception would have been like 
without their preparations and their quiet service. The problem is while we are judging the worth of our own and others efforts based on how much value the world assigns those efforts, we totally miss the one who shows up to sanctify, to make holy our existence. Jesus doesn't come expecting to find us in the limelight. He finds us while we are chopping vegetables and changing sheets. He looks for us in the places where we feel the least visible. And it's there that he comes to relieve our fever. While we are tempted to find our worth in being noticed or acknowledged or measured as satisfactory, we forget where our true worth comes from. We overlook Jesus who forgoes fame and comes to us in the quiet unassuming places of our lives to reclaim us. But without worldly attention, all too often we fret. On the one hand, we may worry about whether we are enough or whether we've done enough. Or on the other hand, we may just grab the microphone and demand attention, insisting that the culture not cancel us, cancel culture, you've heard the phrase, as if any culture gets the last word about any of us, when truly that prerogative belongs only to God. With that said, then you could have imagined, who could have imagined, that the one who gets the last word about us, that one whom we know who brings us value, how could we have imagined that he would die in infamy? For all his mercy and every attempt Jesus makes to keep people quiet about his healing and mass feedings because he does not need the fame, Jesus still angers the religious authorities with his goodness. The religious authorities refuse to tolerate him. So they cancel him on the cross. God's gentle but determined servant savior who wants nothing more to, than to bring hope and grace to the world is canceled at Golgotha by death. But like a mother who sets aside all reason to dive in after her drowning child, God refuses to leave his son to the grave. God cancels Jesus' death. And Jesus walks from the tomb as determined to do the same essential work for us, to breathe God's peace into our frenzied world, a world that never stops thinking it has something to prove. When Jesus came into Peter's mother-in-law's room, we don't know how sick she was. She may have been delirious with fever, the fear of death surrounding her and her loved ones. Or maybe she just had cold sweats for a couple of days and felt conspicuously unwashed and unpresentable, her clothes stained with fever, her hair disheveled and exposed. Regardless of her appearance, Jesus walks right up to her, this woman without a name in Mark's gospel, and he takes her by the hand. He pulls her to her feet. In the Greek, it literally says, Jesus raises her. And raised to new life, she does what resurrected servants of Jesus do. She serves. She serves not for the gratitude that it will elicit, not to prove herself, not to be validated by the people around her. She serves because the Sabbath is over. And Jesus, Peter, Andrew, James, and John are hungry, and she knows how to feed them. 
Can her cooking compete with Israel's top Jewish chefs? It doesn't matter. What matters is that the hungry are satisfied and she has been revived to do something that helps. There is another side to this story of unnamed essential workers though. It's the story of us who receive their service and how we receive it. Do we treat the essential worker as nameless? Do we offer that essential worker the dignity of looking him in the eye? Do we remember to tip the server who doesn't even make minimum wage? Do we say please and thank you? The other side of essential workers having a sense of worth is each of us treating them as Jesus did. We treat them well because they too are made in God's image like us. And we know that a well-placed compliment can fuel their efforts for the rest of their shift. On Wednesdays, when I call my dad on FaceTime to talk with him, I first speak to his caregiver, Martha. Martha is gentle, kind, and very adept at anticipating my father's needs. She also cared for my mom in her last days of life. On the day that my mom died, Martha was there in the room with me, watching over my mother's last breaths. Her work is worth way more than she is paid. And I could never adequately thank her for her comforting and capable attention to my parents. So instead, I thank God for her and I thank her regularly for her service. Thanks be to God for essential workers. Amen.
Cynthia and Jim, we gather with you today in the name of God who creates, saves, and calls us with a love that lasts forever. Amen. Today, we affirm the promises made to each of you in baptism. We celebrate that you have chosen to participate with us in Christian community, to worship, service, prayer, and study for the sake of your sacred call to live out your faith in daily life. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself. Enlighten us with the gifts of your spirit and nourish us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all with all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Cynthia and Jim, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourselves so folks can hear your voice as you speak the renunciation of the devil on behalf of the community. And Cynthia, with the whole company of believers, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? No. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, crucified died, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to the dead. dead. On the, On the third, third day, he rose again. again. He ascended he into heaven. heaven. He, he is seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, Father. And, and he will come, come to, judge to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Cynthia and Jim, will you join the people of this community for worship, study, prayer, and service to others? I will, and I ask God, please help and guide me. Will you practice being curious about scripture, your neighbor, and God's ongoing creation in daily life? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you share your sense of call and unique talents with the spirit of generosity in life of this congregation? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Gathering God, you knit your people together in the body of Christ and form congregations to do your good work. Be present in our feasting and praying and our worship and service so that this community may reflect your abundance and desire for the church on earth today and always. Amen. Amen. Jim and Cynthia, we give thanks for the unique stories and talents that each of you brings to our community. The church is a living organism, and your presence adds value and energy to who we are together. We promise to welcome each of you 
as you express your faith in various ways. We will seek to make the church a safe place for you to show up as your true self and be received with love and grace. We also acknowledge that we will not always succeed in welcoming you as we should, but marked with Christ's cross, we commit ourselves to the dying and rising that is a part of every Christian life and congregation that seeks to grow and be faithful. Cynthia and Jim, do you desire to become members of this congregation investing in our shared mission and ministry? Yes. <laughs> yes, with God's help. Amen. We welcome you as members to the body of Christ mm -hmm. and the ministry we share. We receive you with love and see your presence as a gift. May God nurture and bless our common call to be the agents of God's abundant mercy and grace that the world needs. Thanks. Let's, un let's, uh, to God. let's unmute everybody so we can all say thanks be to God and uh, share our <laughs> acclamation. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Welcome. Welcome, Cynthia and Jim. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to we both welcome of you. Welcome. 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 We continue with the prayers. Guided by Christ, made known to us as the light, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in any need. For this church ministries done behind the scenes, for phone calls made, cards written, prayers lifted up, for litter picked up, and buildings secured, for bread baked, and candles refilled, that we may not only benefit from, but be grateful for this service in Christ's name, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For creation and those who tend to it, for beekeepers and organic farmers, for oceanographers who seek new ways to preserve seal life, for those building up renewable resources that enable jobs and encourage earth-friendly practices, that we may support all ventures that enable our future, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who administer the equitable distribution of vaccines, for all of us called to cooperate in safe practices that protect our families, our elders, our neighbors, and for the nations of Brazil and South Africa who have been assaulted by a new strain of the virus that we may work for health of all, for the health of all, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For essential workers, fast food cooks, well, grocery cashiers, like Amazon stockers, it's like Bill. and grandma doing childcare and making meals. For teachers teaching invisibly on Zoom, with 30 squirmy kids online, principals counseling families remotely, janitors and maids who unseen bring order out of chaos for all come home to bills that exceed their income. That we may do justice and that they may find rest, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are ill with COVID, for those experiencing distress in their isolation, for those recovering from illness or injury. Especially we pray for Vivian and Bonnie Anderson, Gretchen, David and Heidi Haynes, that they may find health and healing. Let us pray. Have mercy, Have mercy oh God. For those whom we haven't yet met, especially outreach social and social ministries centered here for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place 
who open us to new understandings. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also, also with you. With you. <clears throat> Peace, 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 God's peace, Vicky. That guy's in Florida. A couple, a couple of a couple of announcements for you at, uh, as we continue our service. Uh, the first is that um, we continue with our opportunities to gather uh, on Zoom midweek with uh, Bible study opportunities and other um, book studies and um, our Sacred Ground gathering that uh, meets every three weeks. Uh, but we also have uh, continuing forums. And this upcoming Sunday on the forum, uh, Suzanne Higgins is coordinating with our friends at the Fusion Family Center so that we can get an update on what is happening there. On December 24th of all days, uh, people were able to move into the Family Center and uh, they are, be they are uh, continuing to uh, do intakes and, and uh, continue to occupy the space uh, with a greater number of people. So we'll get to hear how things are developing there. And then um, the, uh, the Wednesday immediately after our Sunday worship and forum is Ash Wednesday, if you can imagine it. Uh, and so look for announcements about how we will be doing Ash Wednesday, both with an in-person imposition of ashes, if you should so should choose, and also making ashes available to you at home for our seven o'clock worship. Look for those details in the weekly update. gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew, anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. 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 In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, O oh God, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will, will be done on earth on as earth in, heaven. in heaven. Give us today yes, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our us sins, our sins as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin, sin against us. Yes. Save us from Save the us time from of the trial, trial and, and deliver, deliver us from, from evil. The For the kingdom, kingdom the power, power and, and the glory are yours ours, now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, here is bread. Here is wine. This is where we find Jesus. Come and be fed. Please take partake of the elements that are before you in worship. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Christ Jesus, at this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in spot, in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. 
Amen. Amen. unmute yourself so we can hear the cacophony of the response to the blessing and the dismissal. May God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you with love. And the Holy Spirit, our comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you to God. Thank you to God. Thank you to God.